Now, a lot of the time that we work with fractions, we want to cut a fraction down into its simplest form. Because if we give an answer like this, it's probably not the best answer, and it's not as easy to understand as if we made the fraction much simpler. So how do we do it? Well, as long as you divide the top and the bottom of the fraction by the same thing, it will still be in proportion. So you're looking for a whole number you can divide it by that gives you a whole number. So it's really handy to know the factors of the number. Now, two ways that you can do this. I want you to watch both methods and you'll see the advantage and disadvantage of each one. One way to do it is just to look for any old factor that they share and divide by it. So you might say, oh, they're both even numbers, so they must be divisible by two. I'm going to halve both of them. So you write down what you're going to do. I'm going to divide them by two, divide that one by two, divide that one by two. And that will give me 30 divided by two, which is 15 and 40 divided by 2, which is 20. All right, now look at 15 and 20. Do they share any common factors? Yep, both in the five times tables. So I'm going to divide them by 5. So we say that's equal to, if we took this one and divided it by 5, and we took that one and divided it, whoops, 20, and divided it by 5. All right, what do we get? 15 divided by 5 is 3. 20 divided by 5 is 4. Now, do these share any factors? Only one. Okay, so it's as simple as it can get because we've got them all the way down until one of them is a prime number. So this is our answer. Three quarters is the same as 30 fortieths. Now this was a quite quick, easy way to do it. It was really easy to spot that these both were even and I could half them. And it was really easy to spot that these were both divisible by five. Is there a quicker way? Yes and no. It could be quicker if you can spot the highest common factor that they both share. Now let's think of all the factors of 30. 30 has got 1 and 30, 2 and 15, 3 and 10, 5 and 6. So if we write all of those down in order of size, now that can take some people a little while. That's why I say this might be a quicker way if you know your times tables really well. It could be slower though if it takes you a while to do this step. If you can do this step in your head, you're ahead. The factors are 40, we've got 1 and 40, we've got 2 and 20, we've got 4 and 10, and we've got 5 and 8, because 5 eighths are 40. Now if you look at all the factors of both of them and work upwards from the bottom, the biggest factor that they both have is 10. So if you divide by that, you can cut to the chase and get your best answer in one step instead of taking two steps to do it. Now this makes sense because look, we divided by two and then we divided by five. Imagine if you took cards that you were going to hand out and you put them in two piles by dividing by two and you put, took each of those piles and made five piles with those and five piles with those, all together you've divided it up into 10 piles, haven't you? You just did it in two steps. So someone who can spot the biggest common factor that they share really quickly is going to be much more efficient to go straight to dividing by that. Divide by 10 and you'll get the answer straight off. So this method is great. Spot the highest common factor. And you'll see that in your textbook. Divide by the highest common factor or the HCF. And that is the quickest way to simplify a fraction. But if all of that takes you quite a long time and you think, look, I could have just done this really quickly and done this really quickly, and be here by now, this is also a pretty decent way to simplify a fraction. Let's have a look at another example. Let's take a number like 21 30 fifths and make it as simple as it can be. All right, do we need to write down all the factors or can we just think them? Well, we can probably think them through because there's less factors in these numbers, aren't there? Think of 21, it's got one times 21 and it's got three times seven. So, just think through. Is 21 a factor of 35? No. Nope. Is 7 a factor of 30? Yes, it is. 7 fives and 35. So see how I only had to do a tiny bit of thinking to work out my plan, which is I'm going to divide them both by 7. Now you can spot they're both in the 7 times tables. So even without thinking what the highest common factor is, someone with that first method might have just thought, I'm just going to divide them by 7 and see what happens. All right, so away we go. Divide by 7 and divide by 7. 21 divided by 7 is 3, and 35 divided by 7 is 5. 
3 fifths, therefore, is exactly the same amount as 21 30 fifths. And we can tell this is as good as it gets because they're prime numbers. As long as one of them is a prime number at least, then you know it can't get any better. Now, once you've been doing this for a little while, you might find this step a little bit tedious because you think, well, I can actually do that in my head. I know my times tables really well. <coughs> when you get to that step, <coughs> you'll start to do what's called cancelling. Cancelling means you pretty much do this step in your head and cut straight to the answer. So you say, hey, they're both in the seven times tables. I'm going to divide them both by seven. And in your head, you say, divide this by seven, and I'll get three. Divide this by seven, and I'll get five. And the answer is just looking at you there, three fifths. Now, the advantage of this, okay, it looks a little bit messy, but it's really quick to do, okay? So once you get good at, at simplifying your fractions the slow way, feel free to cut to doing them this way, which is called cancelling. Let's have a go at another one. And we'll do it the cancelling way. Let's do 63 nineteenths. All right, what times tables are they both in? Ooh, I can spot they're both in the nine times tables, aren't they? This one is seven nines, and this one is 10 nines. So I'm going to divide this one by nine, and divide this one by nine, and I get seven tenths. Nice and easy. 